Now we're going to be doing the same uh, topics uh, in Xcode that we just did in Android Studio. Oh so um, we're going to see how to how to implement that. Now, um, Xcode is uh, quite different in that regard. Now, the, there is excellent documentation on this. It's easy to find. If you go to Google and uh, you type Swift uh, language and you can do reference, guide, or whatever. Um, you see here swift.org uh, uh, documentation. Then you got a language guide. And over here on uh, all the on the side are all the things you can check. I don't really have it broke down uh, as much as you might like. You see there's one that says control flow. This is our for loops and our while loops. And we're going to we're going to first focus on the number part and then we'll refer to the examples here where they get into more than that. Now here is an example of a number for index in 1.5 and then you have your braces. Okay. Now I've already uh, I've already created a, um, a program for this, but um, we'll we'll experiment and see. So I'm going to do uh, close this. So close the project. Stop the tasks. Go into file new project. Yeah, I gotta clean up my desktop. I got a lot of junk here. Single view app. And uh, looping test. Or whatever you want to call it. Click next. And click create. That's fine. And you can make this full screen if you want. I'm going to click the main storyboard. And what we want here is we want uh, one text field and we want one button. So nothing too exciting. Exhilarating. So I'm going to drop on a text field, and I'll drop on a button. If you want to um, put any kind of label on it, you can. If you want to rename the button, that's fine. But we're just testing the code anyway, so it doesn't really much matter for this. Now that we got this designed, we want to um, go into our code. So remember, you click the two circles, shut off the side panels, now we want to create a, a connection for the text field, so I'm going to hold down my control, click and drag it right below this uh, UI view controller, just like always, and let up. 
And I'll call this TF underscore uh, num1. And click connect. Then we want to click the button, hold on your control, drag and drop it right before the last curly brace. We want this, if you choose the connection, to be an action. Uh, give it some kind of name, like button click or something. And type, we want it to be a UI button, user interface, and click connect. Now, just uh, at this point, I want to press an enter after this um, beginning curly brace. And go ahead and run your app. Let's make sure that it made the connection. That seemed to be where we were having a problem on uh, some of the machines. <laughs> Is everybody good? Uh, loading the simulator. Loading the you're good? Yes. You're very good? Okay. Fantastic. Not one person broke on that. I'm going to stop the emulator or simulator. Just click the, the square up here. And we want to add all the numbers from uh, 1 to 100 using a for loop. So we need to declare a variable. So um, variable the sum integer. I want to set the sum equal to zero initially. Now this is the for the format of it, where we got four index in one dot 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 five. Uh, I don't know why there's three dots there. So if we put four index, and we want uh, in one dot 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 one hundred, and I'll put a beginning curly brace and a closing curly brace. So the sum is equal to the sum plus index. And now we need to return it back to the screen. So up here I call this tf underscore num1. So I'm going to do a tf underscore num1 and um, dot text equals string the sum. I have seen um, other programming languages that had like two dots. I've never seen one that had three dots. So when I was uh, uh, checking this this morning to make sure I remembered how to do it, <laughs> I was putting two dots. It kept giving me an error. So then I had to go look at the, the documentation. It's like, oh, three dots. I have no clue why they chose three dots instead of two. It could be mathematical. Because in, in mathematics, you don't um, show all the numbers. You put uh, dots to indicate those missing numbers. Okay, let's run this. And if we click our button, we get 5,050, which should look familiar. We've gotten that like three times, actually, before this. Oh, yeah. This is our fourth time. 
because we did that do while uh, loop. So we know that's working. I don't know if there's a way to comment out your code here or not. Um, we'll try to. Okay, so I got that there. If it is somewhere, it'll probably be uh, edit. Um, Here's a structure toggle the comments. Let's choose that. Ah, there it is. Where in the world did I find that? If you go to editor and structure and um, toggle comments, or you do your uh, command key and a slash, then it'll put the slash slash at the beginning. Okay, so we got the code there so you can refer to that. Well, next thing we're going to look at is a while loop. Now, the while loop is, uh, now, let me talk about this, um, even though we talked about it in the other, uh, other course. I'm recording this for, for people at home also. Um, first time through this loop, the sum is equal to zero. And then index is equal to one. So it comes down here, it plugs in 0 here, plugs in 1 here. 0 plus 1 is 1, and assigns that to the sum. Then it comes back and does this again. And automatically increases it by 1. And so index is now 2. So it takes the old value of sum, which is 1, and it adds 2, which gives you 3, and so on. So it performs kind of the same function as what we saw in Android Studio. Just doesn't have as many features here, does it? Um, but I'm going to show you some examples over in our documentation to show you it's more than just what I'm showing here. It's nice and simple. It's nice and simple right here. And that was kind of their goal under design. Is that why you like it better? Yes. Now, if I do var the sum integer, now we're going to use a while loop. So I'm going to need a um, another variable, um, maybe index integer, and I'll say the sum. And you can do this all in one statement, but I'm doing them separate here. The sum is equal to zero, and I'll say index is equal to one. Now we have our while, and um, this this just really throws me uh, how to do this. While index is less than or equal to 100, and then the sum is equal to the sum plus um, index. What else do I need? Okay. Right, I need to increment my index, right? Otherwise, I just wrote an infinite loop. Index is equal to index plus one. And at that point, we're ready to write it back out to the, string, the screen. What throws me about this is every other programming language, when you have a while, you have to have parentheses around your Boolean um, comparison there, your condition. The index is less than or equal to 100. But not Xcode. Now, I think it worked. It's fine if you did put parentheses around it.
This is our for loop. And this is our while loop. Like I said, I think they have another one. I think they have a repeat until. It's kind of like a do while, I believe. I'll look in a second. You get figured out? That builds so pretty good? Okay. So then we run this. And uh, yet again, we're going to find out. Um, <laughs> so we get 5,050 again. This is like what, the fifth time? You'll go home and it's like, what'd you learn today? Uh, sum of 1 to 100 is 5,050. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty random. Everybody get theirs to work? Your simulator froze up? Yeah. Like I can turn it on. Then stop it and then restart. Yeah, go through the simulator and exit out. Yeah. It's kind of unusual. Mac is this supposed to work? Looks like you have an infinite loop. Quit simulator. Fantastic. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, you did increase index. What? See down here, the sums. Yeah. You need index equals index plus one. Oh. Yeah. That's what occurs on a Mac when you write an infinite loop. Now, eventually, I think that would have crashed. It would have exceeded the limits of that variable, and you would have saw it uh, terminate. Is it working now? Still loading? Okay. I didn't know if you can move your, your mouse back. You good? Forth. Okay. Now, here's some variations of uh, the controlling the flow. And by the way, an if, if statement does control your flow also. Here's where you got lib names equals Anna, Alex, Brian, Jack. And you say for name and names, and then you can print hello and then the slash uh, name there inside of parentheses and then exclamation. Uh, we're going we're to talk more about lists and arrays and so forth later on, so don't worry about that. But this is just showing you can loop through names. Why would you loop through names? Yeah. Maybe on your app, they added a bunch of names. So you're looping through those names. Maybe you're going to send emails to them. Because names is just a string, isn't it? So maybe they, they put on four email addresses that they added in. And so you're going to loop through it programmatically and send emails to all four of those people. Now down here... Um, we got a more advanced um, uh, uh, list it's called a dictionary where you got uh, spiders, eight, ants is six, cat is four, and that refers to the number of legs. And so then you do a for loop, uh, animal name, comma, leg count, in, number of legs, and then you print that. So when it's looping through here, it's grabbing a, what, what's a dictionary? It's a... Book word, word, book of words, and what? Definitions. Definitions. Um, so a dictionary here is you have some kind of key, and then you have some kind of data value. Um, so spider's tied to eight, because it's got eight legs. Ant's tied to six, because it's got six legs. And cat's tied to four. We're going to talk about dictionaries a lot more later on, so don't worry about that. Um...
<laughs> this is talking about if you don't need each value from a sequence, you can ignore the values by using an underscore in place of a variable name. So if you're not going to really do anything with the variable name, you can just put a, a, an underscore there. And what that'll do is it won't uh, consume that memory for that variable. Um, now in our for loop, for tick mark in zero dot dot less than minutes. So this uh, less than or dot dot less than, um, this does not include the upper bound. So what's this going to go through? Zero to what? Um, did not include the upper bound. It's less than 60. Zero to 59. And it's, it's an integer, so it's going by integers. Um... Now here, let hours equals 12, actually both of these. For tick mark in stride, and then from zero comma two, and then minutes, and then by minute interval. Render the tick mark every five minutes. Um, down here, from, through, and by. What's this doing? What's the from do? For my loop construct, what's what's a from do? Starts at three, doesn't it? Yeah. So it starts at three. And then goes up by And this goes through what? Twelve. Well, yeah, it, the, the, the words kind of really tell you exactly what it's doing. It's coming from, it's going through, and then it's going by. So what, what's a by mean? It's adding. It's adding, right? So it starts at three, and our interval is three, so it's adding three over and over. Three plus three is six, plus another three is nine, plus another three is twelve. Um, so that shows you with the for loop, you do have a little bit more flexibility than just the, the simple example I gave you. If you're going to do anything more complex, though, I'd recommend using a while loop. And here's our while loop. You got while and you got your Boolean condition that's either true or false. And then your statements. Oh, you said that. And um, here's while square is less than final square. That's a similar example we had. Now here's what we're going to put in. Remember, what was the uh, Android uh, Studio structure we used? No, that last looping. Do while. Here they have a repeat while, <laughs> which, which performs the same function. Repeat, make sure that you do it, do the statements at least once. Okay. So let's go put that in there. So I'm going to comment out all this code. So I'll highlight that. Um, let's see, where was that at? Editor, structure, toggle comments. And this is going to be a repeat while loop. Again, I don't, I don't really like these particular structures, but if you do, you're welcome to use them. Uh, we declare the sum equals integer. We got our index. It's still an integer. The sum is equal to 0. Index equal to 1. We have our repeat statement, and we put our curly, curly bracket.
And I'm going to put in here the sum equals to the sum plus index. You're in control of uh, increasing index, so you have to put that in there. And while um, index is less than or equal to 100. And that to write it back out. tf underscore num1 dot text equals string the sum. <laughs> well, that's assuming mine's going to work. Let me run mine, make sure it works. Mine works. You get 550? Yeah. Or 5,050 again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so compare your code against that. What am I doing? Oh, 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 Do you find it? No? Let me come take a look. Uh, variable does some integer. Um, you have an uh, initialize those. <laughs> See the that's sum equals zero and index equals one. <laughs> that's that's what you did. Right? Oh yeah. That's a good I just did that in class and I was like, zero the <laughs> Now again, uh, when you when would you use these on an app? Well, if you're definitely doing a mathematical calculation, you would. But um, it could be that if you were trying to um, program something that would have to go through a list of something. That's an uh, iteration over and over. Um, like if you, on an app, you drop three or four items over. So you flip them over from here into a list. If you're going to go and loop through those, then that's, again, looping. That work when you did put those in? Yeah. Okay. Now that's our repeat while. Let's see if there's any other. They got the conditional statements and the if statement we've talked about. Now here's a switch statement. And I'm not uh, real crazy about a switch statement. So I like using if else's. Um, but I will mention it. Switch, some value to consider. You got case value one, respond to it. Case value 2, value 3, respond to those. Default, otherwise do this. So if I give you an example, you're um, retrieving a character, and you, you've got a switch statement on that character, and you're checking if it's equal to A. That's what this case does here. It checks, is, okay, is it equal to A? 
If it does, then you do this. If it's equal to z, if it is, you do this. Otherwise, you do this line of code. Now, this works out nice. I only use switch statement one time in 13 years of programming. When you read a barcode, what's on a what's on a barcode? Do you know? Lines. Lines, and it, it it's interpreted to what? Text. Text. So, um, I don't know if I got any barcode here, but if I did have a barcode, we implemented a barcode system at IFR. And um, we figured that if we didn't do something about it, people on the production floor, because they didn't like the new system to begin with, maybe they never liked it, I don't know, we would be worrying that they would be scanning their pop can in, uh, on the boards. And a lot of places worry about this. You know, what, what prevents um, uh, uh, you taking in some kind of weird code into Walmart and scanning it? You know, those self-checkout places? How do they get around that? Well, how we did it at IFR is we started the text with .wo for work order. .sq, I think it was, for sequence. So that was the first part of that barcode. So when they scanned it in, we knew they weren't scanning a pop can because they had to start with .wo or .sq for sequence. There's .po for purchase, purchase order and so forth. What about a QR code? What? What about a QR code? That didn't exist back then, but I don't, I don't really know if they have anything unique there. Probably. Yeah, I know for sure. Is that binary? That is, yeah. Oh, okay. I think black is, black is either one. Is it? Black is zero, white is one. Now with a with a bar with a um, the barcode itself, the differing widths tells what letter it is or what character or whatever. Oh, that makes sense. So um, <laughs> I worked with one individual who said they could read barcodes. I thought he's full of it. It's just like can't sit there and read it. Oh yeah, that says uh, thirty three point five. <laughs> um, oftentimes in a store. They do not hard code the price in the barcode, do they? What that is is some kind of code that then goes to a database. So when you scan it in, it sees, okay, this is dot uh, PR for price or whatever, and then has a code, looks up in the database, uh, such that if the price changes, they change it in the database, and then immediately when they start scanning, it's got the new price. So that's the idea behind it. Well, when, you re when you're reading in a character at a time, a switch statement works out very, very well. Instead of having the uh, 25, 30 different if else statements, you can use a, a case. Um, probably depends on how it's written. If you got is, uh, if it's poorly written, you probably could. Yeah, there's a, there's actually a class we're not offering it, but um, I'd like to in the future. Um, uh, expand our, our security um, program here and there's a class on for programming what should you do programming wise to ensure that people can't hack in that it doesn't create those holes you're talking about it's actually an interesting uh, interesting class okay now that's a case um let's see Case, Matt, you can do numbers. What do you think this does? One dot dot less than five. Oh, any number from one to four. One to four, exactly, because it's less than five. How about five dot dot less than 12? Mm, five to 11. Five to 11. Um, this is the same as doing an if statement, where you're checking to see if the number is greater than or equal to five and it's less than or equal to a certain value. Um, so it's kind of nice in that way. Tuples, we're not going to talk about yet. That's probably all the exciting ones right there. So now let's get to the board. Okay. Now um, I got two projects for you. One is just to write a, uh, uh, um, a factorial, like you did in the previous one. Your app should bring in the 
the um, code, you know, from the text field, the number, I should say, and then calculate the factorial. Remember, the factorial is where you have 5 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which would give you 120. Are we going to be submitting those? You'll be submitting that. Yeah, so start a new project um, and design it, uh, design it accordingly. Put your labels on it so it looks nice and so forth. Now, the second project, since I don't think that will take you very long, is to simplify a fraction. So let's talk about that briefly. And I want you to work together on this. Put your three heads together, go off on a whiteboard, and, and think about how you'd program it. Um, if you got 8 sixteenths, what does that reduce to? One half? So, how did you get that one half? You take both numbers and divide by the other big things that will be some calculator. So, you divide by the largest number that goes into both of them? You divide by eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, one thing you will need to know in here is how to get the remainder. You need the remainder. And I showed you the Swift um, documentation for that, so go out there and look to see how to get the remainder. And uh, if you did 8 divided by 8, that gives you what? 1 with remainder of uh, 0. How about 16 divided by 8? What's that give you? Uh, 2. Uh, two with the remainder of zero. <laughs> okay, I better show that. Hopefully I can uh, figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I Hovercam. Let's see if there's software for Hovercam. It's a PC. That's not a. Oh, here it is. For Flex or for Mac. Actually, let me just show um, show it um, here. When you do a um, division, your long division, 8, and you're dividing that into 16, looks like this, right? So the 8 doesn't go into 1, does it? Does go into 16. Goes into 16 two times. And then 2 times 8 gives you 16. And then you subtract that. Zero, which is our remainder. Now that's how you do it by hand. But there's a way to retrieve the remainder on the um, in the Swift pro programming language. I want to see if you can go through the documentation and locate that. But that's uh, that combined with a looping is how you uh, will simplify a fraction. Now for the app, 
app will have two text box, two text fields, one for the top of the fraction, which is called what? The numerator. numerator, and one for the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. The denominator. And then you're going to brute force go through using a loop of some sort and figure out the largest number that divides into both of them. And I, I want to see how, uh, see what you come up with on that. Okay. It's a little bit of a challenge, challenging project um, for beginning programming, but I have faith in you guys. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the rest time to work on that. And so he said, us three can work together. 